So we've already covered last time uh, about uh, J coupling in general and three behind J coupling, especially tends to be the, the most, the most prominent feature that those cause multiplets that are centered about the actual chemical shift of a, of a proton and that the N plus one rule applies when there is free rotation, like in the small molecule that we looked at last time. So in this case, all the coupling constants are equivalent at about six Hertz. And we decided that meant if this is the resonance frequency, what we're gonna see is that that resonance is gonna be split once by six Hertz, right? again by six Hertz, again by six Hertz. And as that happens, those interior peaks will coalesce. They will create uh, more intensity and so we can use Pascal's triangle to predict the relative intensity of the lobes of the multiplet. That means we're gonna get, in this case, predict, we predicted a one to three to three to one quartet, just a classic uh, multiplet for a proton that has three equivalent coupling partners, right? But we've got, we've got something new going on in, in our molecule this week. We've got a bond where this kind of free rotation doesn't happen. And these dihedral angles are, are not being sampled uh, rapidly on the NMR time scale, they're locked, right? So those things aren't, aren't spinning around that bond anymore. We're gonna have a, a motif where they're locked in place. And that is of course the allyl group, right? So when the J coupling constants are the same, all that N plus one multiplet stuff applies, but what happens when they're not? Right? When they're not, the N plus one rule doesn't really work, okay? Let's look at why. So here is a, a 3D representation of the molecule that we're trying to make. Here's that, that allyl ether motif that we're hoping to attach. So if there is indeed an allyl group present, how are we gonna figure that out by NMR? Well, let's look at it real closely here. There is a, there is a pi bond here between these two sp2 hybridized carbons. That means that they do not enjoy free rotation, which means, for example, these two hydrogens here are locked in that zero degree dihedral, right? Uh, whereas these two hydrogens here, right, they are locked in a 180 degree dihedral relationship. Their coupling constants are not going to be about six Hertz. They're going to be pretty different actually. So let's look at what those are, right? So here we've got a, a bond that has free rotation. So we expect six Hertz coupling constants between uh, our interior vinyl and our methylene hydrogens. But those uh, cis alkene hydrogens, the cis vinyl hydrogens actually couple at about 12 Hertz. And the trans couple at about 18 Hertz. So they're gonna have their features split in much more widely by these protons when they're, when they're cross talking magnetically. And because our, our terminal uh, vinyl hydrogens here are in different chemical environments as well, a consequence of the restricted rotation, they have different chemical shifts and they can couple to one another. And oftentimes that two bond J coupling is around two Hertz. So we're gonna have a much more complex uh, magnetic coupling landscape around that particular or protons in that particular motif. Right? So let's, let's pick one out and see what it will look like. Let's work on this one right here. So this guy right here is gonna be coupled to its um, geminal neighbor by two Hertz, right? And it will be coupled to its vicinal neighbor over here, this trans relationship at 18 Hertz. Meaning if I know it's chemical shift, let me just plot that on my, my spectrum here. Uh, it's going to be split, but it's not going to split in exactly the same way we looked at previously. Now it's going to be split first by 18 hertz, but then again, we need to split it by two hertz to account for the second coupling. So that first splitting is very wide at 18 hertz. The second is very narrow at two hertz. And as you can see, what happens here is the interior lobes do not coalesce. We do not see a one to two to one triplet as we might predict for a proton that has two coupling partners. Right? Instead, we, we don't get any peaks coming together, which means that the overall intensities are gonna be equivalent and the feature is gonna look like this. Now, when we see a feature like this, we do not call this a quartet. Right? To call something a quartet, that, that's code for, it's, it's four lobes created by three equivalent couplings. This is four lobes created by two non-equivalent couplings. And so we, we call this a doublet of doublets, right? And that lets uh, our reader or, or whoever's listening to us under, you know, understand how this feature comes to be. This is four lobes, but it's not because of three coupling. It's because of, of two hydrogens coupling. They're just coupling differently. Uh, so the, the, the rule for this is uh, we use the term singlet, doublet, triplet, quartet, pentet, and then we're allowed to go to multiplet at that point when things get more complex 
under the the n plus one uh, rule arena. Uh, when we are looking at, at these kind of odd multiplets, uh, we use doublet of doublets, we use doublet of triplets, and then we go to multiplet. Um, so that's that's if you look up the uh, the rules, uh, I think that's Journal of Organic Chemistry's guidelines for authors. Um, we would have to call this a doublet of doublets, right? not a quartet. Okay. So we've got our doublet of doublets there. Now there are some others here and I would challenge you to figure out what the multiplicities of all of these hydrogens in the vinyl group should be because they're unusual. And, and, and in that respect, they're easy to find and identify. They give us a good firm foothold on, during our NMR assignments, if we can locate it. In particular, uh, this interior vinyl hydrogen right there, that one has got a really wild multiplet. So try to, try to do this exercise for yourself, um, get a piece of graph paper or whatever, and, and, and split your, your resonance by six, uh, by 12, by 18, by six, and so on, uh, until you, you've uh, accounted for all of these couplings and see what kind of multiplet you expect to see in your NMR spectrum. It's pretty cool. Hey everybody, Professor Davis here. Thanks for watching our short discussion on the effects of restricted rotation on proton NMR resonance multiplicities. I hope you enjoyed that, and I also hope you'll like, share, and subscribe for lots of other great discussions on organic chemistry.